Uh, just another terrific basketball game. Um, you know, incredibly well played offensively by both teams in the second half. Um, you know, obviously fun to watch, except for the last last few seconds. Um, you know, I'm really proud of our players. Uh, I just I thought we gave everything we had. Uh, defensively, we weren't very good in the second half, or as good, I should say. North Carolina kids made some plays too. They made some shots. Um, and they're hard to guard. They got talented guys. Um, but you know, it's it's I just hurt for my team. I wouldn't want my team to have something good happen for them. They two good days trying to get ready for this one and and poured heart and soul into it and just you know came up a play short. So uh, but credit North Carolina, Hubert and their guys uh, did some nice things and and uh fastest guy so we just lobbed it and got it to him on the move he had the option to go you know get him It's right on line. It's just short and leaky contested. Great. So, um, you know, that's, that's good. You, you get a chance to win the balls in the air. You got it on the rim. You got a chance. We just didn't make it. I guess you've lost uh, to Duke by two points, right? UNC by two points. I mean, how do you feel like your guys are handling this? Just coming. Um, well, I'll let you know, you know, tomorrow. Like it was obviously a very somber locker room right there. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it's really hard. I, you know, there's a lot of it is, that is very emotional, right, for kids. Um, and it's it's just, you know, it. I always say, because it's football country, that it's just, you know, our games come so quickly sometimes that the kids don't have a chance to, like, get recharged. And we play so many more games, that's why there's not always a great performance, right? We don't have all week to get ready and, like, kind of build it to the Saturday crescendo. You, you, you know, you flip the switch and you got to go. And – it's hard to pour your heart and soul into thing every single night and then, you know, kind of get your heart pulled out of your chest because you feel like you got a great win or a chance at a great win and then you got to do it again. But it, like I told our kids, man, this is ACC basketball. You're playing in a great environment. What a game. Incredible to be a part of it. What a blessing and how fortunate you are. And hopefully we do it again, you know, the next two days. We, we'll go again and play the dark blue and, uh, you know, so, but it's hard because, you know, coming close doesn't get it done. And we, we got, we got to find ways to win. Brad, how differently do you have to play with Nass starting instead of Hunter as far as the spacing? And stuff? Yeah, it's a little different. Um, you know, Nas a little quicker on some things. Obviously, Hunter better shooter, uh, a little taller, helps defensively. You know, just, it, it's just, you know, it's, it's a different deal. And we're trying to work through that as well. You know, obviously, Ian played very well tonight. And, you know, you're trying to look for matchups defensively that make sense, that can help you. And, you know, Brady Manick is such a good player and has such a quick release. And, I mean, he gets it off. And they run some good stuff for him. And we put David Collins on him to try to bother him. And he did a fantastic job. Um, you know, now, you know, that that puts other guys on a different matchup. Um, but – you know, that's the kind of respect, you know, so you're not always guarding traditional four with traditional four. You're, you know, as coaches, we're, we're trying to tweak all the time and figure things out. And uh, this was a great game for Ian. I hope it gives him a ton of confidence. Um, 
you know, like a freshman, he's been up and down for us in practice and same thing in some games. He played great in our win at Virginia. You know, he hasn't gotten to play all the time consistently, which isn't easy. Um, and he, we're trying to play him in a couple of different positions, a little bit of five, a little bit of four. Uh, but I thought he was fantastic today. And that, that's fun and good. And that's the benefit of Hunter being hurt. That's one of the positives we hope that comes from this for next year. Brad, as a coach, how do you try to get them to wipe this clean and get ready for Duke here in less than 48 hours? Yeah, yeah I mean, that's just what you have to do. It's what we – I mean, you know, this game's over. And, uh, you know, it'll be it'll be hard tonight. And, uh, you know, sometimes these kids get through things a little quicker sometimes than I'd even like. Like when we don't play as well and we lose, uh, you know, I want them to – Think about it a little bit more. Like it should, you shouldn't wake up the next day and just be ready to go. That should bother you. You know, it's different than when you play pretty well and you make a lot of good plays and you pour your heart and soul into it. And then it's it's more difficult, right? Uh, so, but we'll we'll try to flush it. And you know, when we get together tomorrow afternoon on Duke, we'll get right to it. I'm sure we'll have guys come in during the day and watch some some clips with their position coaches to try to teach because we still got a lot of young guys, even PJ, you know, there's all kinds of teaching clips on here that he needs to see, uh, you know, and that's, that's a big part of what we're trying to do is be teachers and uh, get them to understand the game a little better. How much did it hurt him picking up his second foul? It did. He and David both getting in foul trouble is, you know, that was, that, that hurt us there for a little while. You got both of them, you know, uh, <laughs> over there and you're trying to manage it. And, you know, that's part of him learning how to be a great player because sometimes some of his fouls are the ones that are like, you don't need to foul on that play. Even if they like the guy's got you beat, he's going to score. That's all right. Let him, he got you. That time you got to go win the next battle. You can't, that one's over. Now you give it an and one and it's your second foul. And now there's seven minutes to go. We need to win the war. And uh, that's part of being a young player. Can you talk about uh, Ian's importance and how it's grown in the last you know few weeks? Yeah, he just, uh, you know, we think he's a good player. He's a good athlete. Uh, he's got good hands. He can dribble. He can pass. He can shoot. You know, um, but speed of the game is still, you know, there's there's times when it's hard for him. You know, he'll miss something or not see it. But, you know, we have a lot of confidence in him and think he's going to be a good player because he has some feel instincts that are really good and that are better than some some kids. He just he, he, he's not afraid, I don't think. He showed that tonight. Um, we're really trying to coach him to be more aggressive. We think he's got more in him. He was kind of, he's really a high school center. And so, you know, we're trying to teach him to do more things. Hey, you can shoot the ball, like your stroke is good. You make a lot of 15, 16 footers. Let's stretch that thing out, keep working on it. And so we've done a lot with that. And then, hey, you can put the ball on the floor, one or two bounces and make a good play. Made that, made one or two of those tonight. But that's, that's, that's all the skill work before and after practice, extra work, but like developing his game to the point where he feels comfortable doing it in a game, you know, and I think that's, he hasn't played a ton and uh, because we've had Hunter Tyson and PJ Hall. And so, you know, this is, I'm hopeful that this is one of the great benefits of the injury of Hunter is that this kid's going to get double figure minutes every night out now. And, you know, it'll be good for him for next year. PJ can help him as far as, you know, hard lessons as a freshman. Yeah, no, absolutely. One of the great things about our program right now is we have tremendous culture. Um, and what I mean is our kids, you know, are about the right things. They do the right things and they care and they're coachable and it, it, it's passed down. And Amir Sims mentored, you know, PJ as well as anybody. Uh, all of last year. And I told PJ during the recruitment and during his whole freshman year, the best thing that's happening to you, you don't even realize it, nobody does, except for about me, is that you're playing against an all-conference player every single day. And that guy is talking to you, teaching you, encouraging you, helping you so much that wait till next year, you're going to be ready. More, You're going to be more ready than you realize you are because of all the, the lessons and the, the care and the TLC that he got from Amir. And uh you know, that's that's part of what's been happening in our program. It gets passed down, and then you're a freshman. Now, PJ's doing the same thing with, with Ben and Ian. And, you know, there's when when the players that we have assigned in our drive your team, right, like when the players drive their team, that's when you have a good program, a good culture. When the players are doing instead of always the coach, and that's where we're at here. We, we've got players that are invested in driving each other, and that's that's why those the guys that really buy into it are going to be good.
Ian's mm -hmm. going to be good. When you are able to practice, not this week probably too much, <laughs> but when you are able to practice, those Ben and Ian have to practice well, don't they? They do. For the whole team. Um, the really hard part for us right now, since Hunter's injury, is PJ's really not practicing. Sometimes 30 minutes a day before a game, but he really did this this game or last week with Georgia Tech. Um, and then now you don't have Hunter. Like, we're, we're really limited. Like, we don't have anybody else. I mean, we have PJ and – I mean, we have Ian and, and uh, Ben and then Nas up there a little bit. We just have so few guys to get quality reps that it's, it's hard right now. Um, you know, I was really concerned coming into the week and into the game today even because, you know, the last two days when we did try to work, it's just, you know, and you can't work the guys too much because they got to play, you know. And so it's just – it's completely different than what you're going to see when you play against Duke and North Carolina uh, practice. And so that part's hard. But I thought our kids handled it. Brad, on the uh, – that last play for North Carolina um, – was PJ on the bench, and, and what was the thought process there? Yeah, we just felt like if they screened, like we felt like they were going to go up and ball screen with PJ's man and then just attack him and take it to him and, you know, get to the rim. and Or, you know, it happened a little bit early on, on a play or two where he kind of got beat off the dribble or they take it right into him for a foul or, you know. And so we were, we were going to switch anything and – keep guys in front and they kind of ghosted it. So it's not really a screen. And so then you just got to stay with the ball. And um, again, I, I think we were, we were fine if one of our guys just plugged the hole and stayed instead of kind of, you know, worried about his man too much, you know, and that was the mistake. I told the guys, Hey, no layups. If they make a jump shot to beat us, they beat us with a jump shot. But they didn't get that done. So that's, that's on me. A couple weeks ago, you go to Duke. Yeah, one of your better games. You come off too short. Can some of that carry over into Thursday night? With the confidence the guys know that they can play. Well, I hope so. Like I mean, yeah, every game's different, but yeah, I mean, we played an outstanding game at Duke, and kids played their hearts out. We had, you know, had chance. I had a lead with three minutes to go, and um, you know, it'll take another great effort like that. And it's not just your effort. You, you know, you got to make shots. I think we made ten threes or something like that, and um, you have to make basketball plays like. The great thing about today's game was you had kids on both teams making high-level shots down the stretch under pressure. I mean, North Carolina's kids, give them credit. They, they're feeling pressure to make a tournament and had a tough loss the other night, and their kids stepped up made shots. Leakey made a big corner three. Caleb made a couple threes. Manic, you know, made a couple good plays. RJ got in the lane and made a couple – like, they made plays too. Baco had a great game. PJ had a great game. Both teams had kids making plays under duress, and – uh you know, I'm sure the defense on both ends wasn't as good in the second half, but you still got to make the plays. And, uh, you know, you give credit for both kids on both teams being able to do that. That's not always easy to do. Brad, that stretch at the end of the first half for you guys. Struggle. Is there anything you could point to offensively? Uh, well, we we're a little limited because Ben was out there some, and he just – our package isn't as big with him. Um, and then I thought they, they just did a couple nice things that, you know, we didn't give ourselves enough space. Um, you know, in hindsight, we could have moved, kept Ben down a little more. Maybe we probably got him up a little bit too much, and that um, that wasn't quite as good. Didn't up, end up being as good force. So, what has Hunter's head space been like, and is he still as much of a vocal leader? As yes, before? good question. And no, he's been fantastic. Um, and he's a home run kid. I mean, he's captain of our team for a reason. He's a guy that's you know made himself a player and. Um, you know, he's right there with us when we lost to Georgia Tech and we bust back in. The guy had our, you know, he's got a shoulder that's just had surgery and plate put in. And, you know, we get off the bus and there he is waiting on us. Uh, that's the kind of kid he is. Uh, and he's speaking in huddles and he's at practice and he's trying to get treatments and he's and trying to encourage guys in the locker room. I mean, he's just a special young man. And, you know, again, that's part of. It's like when Dante Grantham about happened the same year or same time of year, right around the beginning of November. Dante Grantham was a big part of our Sweet 16 team and tore his ACL, and he came in and you know was a great leader for the rest of the season. And I'm sure Hunter will do the same. When we look back at that Duke game a couple weeks ago, you know, obviously they were missing one of their best players, and now you guys are missing one of your best players. Is there anything you can take from that film, or is it just kind of yeah? There'll be some things that we see. Um, you know, I got to go refresh because we played some games since then, but. There'll be some positives from the game, absolutely, that, you know, we'll use to –
try to emphasize to our players that, you know, hey, this is really good and this is what we got to continue to do uh, to, to have a chance next time. Uh, and there'll be one or two things, hey, guys, this was not as good. And we've, we've got to tweak this or we've got to improve this. Uh, but absolutely, there's some, you know, both teams will use the film in a way to, to help teach their players. Any more questions for Coach? Hey, coaches, Trevor on yep. Zoom. Um, that last play um, was, it was a well-devised, well-executed play to get a great look for uh, Collins there. Um, were you surprised that they didn't guard Chase on the inbounds? And, and did you have a contingency if they did guard him? Uh, were you going to still run that play? Yeah, we had other thoughts and, and things that go with it. You know, I'm obviously not going to tell you everything that, you know, <laughs> right. all of our stuff. But, um, no, I, again, like, guys, putting a guy on the ball, not putting a guy on the ball, you know, everybody who, who judges, you know, you got a guy on the ball and we score, then it's, you, why do you got a guy on the ball? You don't have a guy on the ball and we don't, you know, and it's uh -huh. like, as a coach, you don't win in that battle. It's like they throw it all the way down because, you you know, so they did what they practiced and what they thought worked and it worked, you know, we didn't make the shot. Um, so no, I wasn't surprised. You know, I don't know if I would have had a guy on the ball or not. We kind of do different things as well. And, and it depends on who you're playing against and what you think is going to hurt you. So no, I wasn't surprised. Um, and again, we didn't score. So give Hubert credit. And, and real quick, uh, Nick didn't play in the second half. Is, is he okay? He's fine. Yeah, just one of those games where I was, I thought, playing in a good space and just worked out that way. Yep. Thanks, we'll, need him, we'll need him on Thursday. Okay. Thanks, everybody.